I'm Mike, and this is how I found the truth. All these things started happening. These feelings started to come to me. So I remember in, in a state of desperation. I was so desperate. I'm like, I cannot leave Islam. That you just can't do this. This is not acceptable. I'm a Muslim. I can't be doing this. This is you can't deny Muhammad. You can't deny the Quran. I was working at a prison, and in this prison there were Muslims there, and they started giving me literature. And I started reading this literature in hopes to convert Muslims to Jesus. What I came to find out was they presented questions to me that I wasn't prepared to answer. And I found myself at that time with a lot of doubts, especially with regards to the Trinity. How could God be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? At that time, I started really struggling trying to go to my minister, my college professors, trying to understand what is the Trinity. And the more I got into learning about Islam, trying to just reason through all this, I found myself uh, coming to believe that Muhammad may have been in the Bible. I started to doubt Jesus' deity. I started to believe that maybe he was just a prophet. And after about three years of intense study, I found myself just coming to the reality that I believed in my heart that God was one, that he could not have a son, and that Muhammad was the last prophet. I ended up uh, marrying the woman that I did get pregnant. I ended up having two children at that time, both daughters. And she went out of town to Orlando uh, one weekend, and I actually went to the masjid or the mosque, and I took my shahada, and I ended up embracing Islam. From that time forward, I went deep into the Islamic faith. I went to an Islamic university and I started studying because I wanted to become an imam. I wanted to become a scholar and I wanted to lead people to Islam because I believed Islam was the true faith. I thought, you know, I needed to convert my wife into Islam. I was raising my kids Muslim, so that was good. So the next one I really wanted to work on was my father. So I started to throw things at him from the Bible, trying to get him to question his faith. And this led into a lot of conversations with my dad and my dad wouldn't budge. He wouldn't, he wouldn't break. And I just tried to just throw everything I could at him. And I remember one day I thought I had him. I thought maybe I had my dad. I said, I'm gonna be able to convert him to Islam. That's where I really started to go deep into the Islamic faith. I started looking into a lot of the laws of fiqh, or which is jurisprudence. I started looking into a lot of the teachings of the Quran more in depth. I started to really question, why doesn't the Quran give me, or give us, or Muslims, a detailed understanding of what happened to Jesus? That just kept hitting me, like, if this is from God, if this book is the final revelation without error, according to the Quran, <laughs> given to Muhammad, why doesn't it explain what happened to Jesus? And if he is the Christ, or if he is al-Masih in Arabic, the Messiah, how come the Quran or any Islamic literature does not describe what the Messiah means from the Bible, the anointed one? And then I started really digging deeper into Jesus' identity in the Quran. I started to see that he is called the Kalimat Allah, which is the word of God. He is called Ru Allah. He's called the spirit of God, and he's born of a virgin. And then it hit me. None of these characteristics are given to any, any other prophet. What's going on here? Like, what is really going on? I started to really think Man, what am I doing? Is this really the religion of God? And is Muhammad really the prophet? And when you go to that level, when you start as a Muslim, you start to ask yourself, is Muhammad Rasulullah? Is he the Nabi, the, is he the prophet or Rasulullah, messenger of God? You start to question whether he is, that's, that's haram, that's forbidden in Islam. You're not even supposed to think like that. Something started to prick my heart. And I couldn't understand it. And I would say, God forbid, whenever that would happen, because I'm having feelings for Jesus, but Jesus is just a prophet in Islam. 
but you're not supposed to have any feelings about Jesus. This is not acceptable. I started looking back in the Messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. Isaiah 53 started to pop up all the time in my mind, the suffering servant. And the more I started to question, the more I started to, to go deep and talk to some of my Christian friends, they would start to pray with me. And I'm like, I don't want you praying with me. I didn't want their prayers. My dad's church was praying all the time. All these things started happening. These feelings started to come to me. So I remember in, in a state of desperation, I was so desperate. I'm like, I cannot leave Islam. That you just can't do this. This is not acceptable. I'm a Muslim. I can't be doing this. This is, you can't deny Muhammad. You can't deny the Quran. You can't, this is, I'd given so many years. So many years of my life, and it wasn't even to Allah or God, it was to Muhammad. Do I, do I even know God? Is Allah God? I was so angry thinking that Muhammad may not be the last prophet. So out of a state of desperation, I wrote this article defending Islam. And a guy named Joe Carey from Radical Truth, a Christian apologist, read my article and wrote a rebuttal. He completely obliterated my article. And I knew it deep inside my heart. So I contacted Joe Carey. And I said, hey, you wrote this article, blah, blah, blah. And he said, man, I'm, he said, I wasn't trying to, I'm just stating the facts. He said, you know, you, you wrote some stuff and this, not Islam, is a little bit more than what you, what you believe. I ended up becoming friends with him. And he introduced me to an ex-Muslim named Abdul Murray. And this was the first time I started talking to an ex-Muslim. We would communicate on the phone and talk. And I remember telling, you know, Abdul Murray, I said, I'm going back into Islam and I appreciate the kindness and the friendship, but this is something I have an allegiance to Muhammad that I cannot explain. And I remember Abdul just, just got quiet on the phone. And then he said, if anybody had an allegiance to Muhammad, it is me because I'm an Arab. And then I thought to myself, it was just weird, like, but I, why do I have this allegiance to Muhammad? And I remember saying my night prayer and I went to bed, I went to sleep. And early in the morning, I remember in my dream, I was thinking about the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. And then at that time, this face of a Hebrew man just appeared to me. And he didn't say anything. He just looked at me in his eyes. Were just dark and piercing, like he was just looking through my soul. And I said, this is Jesus. just looked at me and I was like scared and I didn't know what to do and then blood filled my dream and this blood started just coming from nowhere and I'm just trying to escape it trying to run from it, and it's everywhere and then I saw myself projected out into the blood then I woke up in peace and love and I remember I said stock for Allah like God forbid like that, that's from shaitan, that's from the devil. That's not from, that can't be, that's not, there's just no way that it's from Jesus. There's just, this is not God. This is, I was still struggling with the, the reality that Jesus is God at that time, that he is deity. So I went to work the next morning and uh, I was running an addiction treatment program in a jail. And this good Christian man named Steve George, he said, brother Mike, he said, Jesus told me to tell you that he loves you. And that dream just came back, just rushing right back, just right where I was. And I just bowed my head down and I had to cover the, the window because I'm at, I'm at work, right? And I went home and I told my dad about it. And then I contacted Abdul Murray. And I said, brother, I had this dream. And Jesus appeared to me. And he said, 
whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait, when was this dream? And I said, it was like last night or it might have been the night before. And then he paused on the phone and he said, praise God. He said, I met Josh McDowell at an apologetics conference in Orlando and told him your story, how you're struggling to accept Jesus and that your mind and your intellect's getting in the way. And he said, Josh said, let's pray for Jesus to visit Mike in a dream. And I was like, my mind was blown, but I didn't fully surrender to Jesus at that time. I was still considering myself a Muslim and then some days a Christian. It was just, a, I was a mess, a confused, uncertain mess. And I remember December of uh, 2012, maybe the second week I went, to ch I went to this church I'd been visiting. And the pastor said, now's the time to ask Jesus for something, something special. I remember praying and jokingly in my mind saying, give me the peace and love that surpasses all understanding that you, you get, Paul. If you're real, Jesus, if you're real, give me this. And about January 26th, or January 23rd, I ended up just coming home and surrendering my life to Jesus. I had to really step out and walk out on faith. And I, and I said, I'm, I'm putting my heart out and I'm going to walk by faith, Jesus, and, and I'm accepting you into my heart. And I believe you are the son of God and that you died for my sins. And I'm just, I'm, I'm walking down, taking a leap of faith. And then I remember just crying, just, just tears coming out and just feeling forgiveness and love and just every, just so much warmth just coming over my body. And from that po point forward, that was 2013 until now, I'm not going to tell you it's been easy, but I have grown stronger and stronger in my relationship with Christ. It has been one of the most blessed journeys of my life since then in coming to Jesus Christ. I'm Mike, and this is how I found the truth.